Hello and welcome to Buddhist or Global's weekly news highlight. I'm Dr. Justin Whitaker, Senior Correspondent for BDG. This will be our first weekly news highlight, so be sure to click the subscribe and thumbs up button if you enjoy it and offer us your feedback in the comments below. And as always, be sure to check out our website, BuddhistDoor.net, for more on this story as well as other news and features about Buddhism around the world. This week, we highlight India's move to promote post-pandemic train travel to Buddhist heritage sites. The nation of India is embarking on the world's largest mass vaccination campaign this month, and tourism and religious leaders are already looking for a more secure, eco-conscious post-pandemic future. In the years leading to 2020, air travel was steadily on the rise, fueled by growth in emerging economies such as India and nearby nations. India has in the past sought to utilize Buddhism in its efforts to increase international tourism. In 2019, a series of low-cost flights were announced as an incentive to draw domestic and international tourists to an area that has been difficult for visitors to navigate. But as scientists and environmentalists have warned for decades, this rise in air travel cannot be sustained if we are to tackle the climate crisis. Recent studies have shown that domestic rail travel can drastically cut CO2 emissions per passenger per mile. On the 16th of January, officials from India's Ministry of Tourism restated their commitment to developing and promoting train travel. Through such train travel and other eco-friendly transportation options, pilgrims and tourists can return to Buddhism's holy sites in India with a smaller carbon footprint. Planned train-based itineraries begin in the capital, New Delhi, and travel from there to Gaya, where they will be taken for an overnight stay in Bodh Gaya, the site of the Buddha's awakening. Bus trips will then be offered to nearby Rajgir and Nalanda. From there, a train will take visitors to Varanasi, where nearby Sarnath can easily be accessed. Lumbini, the site of the Buddha's birth, will also be on the itinerary, as will Kushinagar, where the Buddha passed away. Further excursions include visits to Shravasti and Agra, as well as a final stop at the Taj Mahal before returning to Delhi. Dr. Achit Singh, General Manager of Tourism and Marketing for the Indian Railway Catering and Tourism Corp, observed that the Buddhist circuit train will cover most venerable sites of Buddhism, following the life of the enlightened one, the Buddha himself, and covering all the places which had a significant impact on the Buddha's life and teachings. At Buddhist Store Global, we have long thought that climate change, now rightly described as the climate crisis or climate emergency, is of paramount importance to humanity and to all sentient beings. We have written and published several Buddhist door views, drawing the long history of Buddhist wisdom to bear on this urgent issue. Further to this, we have invited contri contributions from leading Buddhist activists and teachers, hoping to amplify their voices. Among these has been Satya Robin, whose column Dear Earth explores her relationship to the planet through activism, writing, and her life. Beginning last November, Satya has vowed to sit in the center of her town in England in silent meditation for an hour each day for a full year. She wears a sign around her neck with a vividly colored picture of the earth from space and beneath it the words, with love and grief for the earth. With her eyes closed, she offers information sheets to passers-by should they choose to learn more. Another eco-Buddhist we have been following has been David Loy, a one-time visiting professor at Hong Kong University and founder of the Eco Dharma Retreat Center in Colorado. Loy put his body on the line in 2019, being briefly detained by police in Colorado for blocking traffic to draw awareness to the urgency of the climate crisis. And just as Loy's Eco Dharma Retreat helps to educate through meditation in nature, we can note the long-standing efforts by Buddhists in Asia, such as His Holiness the 12th Gyalwang Drupa, His Holiness the Karmapa, and His Holiness the Dalai Lama, each of whom has advocated for greater environmental protection for years. The Gyalwang Drupa, in particular, has offered a Padyatra, a 450-mile trek on foot through the Himalayas to educate travelers on the effects of climate change. Another low-carbon traveler we have featured at Buddhist Store Global is Heather Lin Man, who, following the guidance of her teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, set sail on a 15,000 nautical mile ocean voyage to study the nature of reality in what she calls the wilderness of the great 
Atlantic Ocean, the great Atlantic teacher. At Buddhist Store Global, we are thrilled to hear about the prospects for low carbon pilgrimage and other travels. Nonetheless, we know that this alone won't tackle the climate crisis or even necessarily slow the growth of travel-based carbon emissions. So as we celebrate the promotion of train travel around Buddhism's holy sites of India, we also hope to take this opportunity to contemplate our own future travel. For that, we can draw upon Buddhist or global columnists, first being Anam Tubten Rinpoche, who has written that, quote, the denial of climate change is not just a single view. It is a mindset that usually tends to deny other important issues, such as human rights, liberty, fairness, gender equality, and racial equality. As we crave a return to a pre-pandemic normal, whatever that may be, let us not return to an ignorance of the effects of our actions and the interconnections they have with other systems of oppression. And secondly, we can contemplate the words of columnist Sister Ocean, a student of Thich Nhat Hanh, who urges us to think about the meaning of the term enough. In our lives in this world so filled with acquisition and adventure and personal gain. As she says, for to simply be alive is a testament to enough. For each of us, the upcoming years will offer opportunities for travel, to consume, to accumulate. But before we do, we must ask ourselves, do we already have enough? Have we seen enough? Can we get by with less as a way to preserve this world and offer more to future generations and to our fragile ecosystems? <laughs>